All right, what's up guys? Today I'm gonna to be talking about Kendama form. Now I was originally gonna make this video where I kind of go over my form. I kind of go over like switching my entire form, which might be something I still do in the future, but I kind of just want to analyze my juggling form and just Kendama form in general today, because as you'll see, it's a, uh, it's pretty wonky and not exactly what you want it to be. If you guys want to see some really like in-depth analysis of Kendama form, make sure to go check out Isaac from Lotus Kendamas. He has a bunch of videos on this kind of topic. This is something that's becoming a lot more popular to talk about both because of Isaac, but also just because of how skilled a lot of players in Japan are and how clean they play and just how in control they play. Um, and as Kendama evolves, as Kendama progresses and gets bigger, Kendama form is just gonna become that much more important. So yeah, I'm gonna just kinda start going over my form right now. I kinda want this to be a video, not necessarily to teach you correct Kendama form, but rather just to kinda show a different type of form. And even though mine may not be ideal and probably the string gets tangled more than usual, um, I feel like it will just kinda offer some, some insight into just Kendama form in general and how I overcame my issues with my form. So as many of you probably know at this point, um, I juggle with the Ken to the left, like this. Of course, that is incorrect. Uh, most people juggle Ken to the right, like that. When I was learning juggling, there was really no tutorials on the internet. I didn't have anybody around me to show me how to do it correctly. So I kind of just learned it this way and I've been doing it this way ever since. And it's really hard to break that muscle memory and learn it the correct way. And of course, the issue with this is I have the string hole from the Ken facing to the left and the Tama is on the right here. So you kind of have the string going over the Ken and it just, it creates a lot more string problems than you would have if you had it on this plane right here. I've kind of learned to deal with the string juggling this way. Um, as you can see here, it's not getting super tangled, uh, but if I were to do like a hundred juggles or something, chances are by the end of that, um, it's gonna be tangled and it's gonna wrap me up. So that's kind of my juggling form. Uh, in terms of like a 1.5 swap, I do the same thing. I have the Ken to the left. What you should do is have the Ken to the right, like that. This is all, of course, if you're uh, right-handed for like a 1.5 swap juggle spike, same thing. I do, of course, spin the Tama out of these. I'm not gonna be talking too much about Tama control today, but there you go. So those are kind of my out of airplane swaps and juggles. In terms of just like a spike juggle spike, that was a really sketchy example. There you go, Ken to the left, forward Tama rotation. I kind of ghost the Tama, do a forward throw. Now one thing my juggling form actually helps with is juggling out of inward lunars, as you can see, because the string on an inward lunar is facing this way. So my normal juggling way, it kind of benefits me there. out of regular lunars, it's kind of a pain because again, it's on the wrong side. Um, and the biggest issue I actually have with this juggling form is when it comes to like late Ken flip lines. I can usually manage it in just like a short late Ken flip line like that, like a three jug three, um, but it, comes, it becomes a real problem. Once I start doing a bunch like this, as you can see the string got tangled there. So again, this form is not ideal for that. Um, so this is one reason I've been thinking about changing it, is just because of those long late Ken flip lines. I've started doing, like if I was doing a 3-3, three, three, I've started practicing it with the Ken to the right. Obviously I don't have the muscle memory down as well with that form, but the string does get tangled less. I'm not as consistent at actually spiking it or even like late Ken flipping out of a juggle like that. I mean, string still got tangled there, but. So if I were to switch my, my form, I think the most value I would get out of it is those late Ken flip lines, definitely. Um, now let's talk about taps. Taps are another thing where I learned these without um, a proper tutorial or people around me kind of showing me how to do it the right way. And this kind of stems back to just even like a one turn lighthouse or like a one turn lunar. I basically never learned how to do a proper one turn lunar. I mean, I can do it now like that, see? As you know, with a one-turn lunar, you kind of start the can like this, it spins, um, so then it flips, small cup's facing you, and then the big cup is facing down, so you can one-turn lunar onto big cup. When I was, I honestly never even learned this trick <laughs> when I first started. So I would just do one-turn lunars to small cup, like that with no spin. 
And this is how I do all my one turn lighthouses. I mean, again, I can still do it the other way like that, but this is just the way I learned it. Cause again, nobody told me otherwise. And this kind of bled into how I tap. So most people of course tap with the Ken spinning like this, like they were gonna do like a one turn lunar or something. I do not tap this way. I mean, I, I can still do it kind of, I guess, but not nearly as well as like that. So I tap with the small cup coming towards me um, and with the string hole from the Ken facing to the right. And this actually does benefit me for my juggles. So if I do like a tap, jug Ken, tap, jug spike, as you can see, string wasn't actually that much of an issue, except I did get a knot, what the heck? So yeah, these lines where I'm going into it straight from like a pull-up tap, my form doesn't create as much of a string issue in that case. Uh, but if I were to do like a triple Ken flip, juggle tap, something like this, as you can see when I'm juggling, it's back to that string issue. So yeah, I can still do these tricks, like I can still do some cool tap lines. But again, I have found a lot of issues with a Ken flip juggle into a tap. One trick that I've wanted to be going for or tried going for recently is a trip Ken juggle six tap juggle, juggle trip Ken spike. Um, and of course that trick is gonna be, gonna become a lot more tricky with my juggle form. I think that's pretty much it in terms of just like juggle form today. I'm not gonna talk too much again about Tama control, but yeah, I just kind of want to get this out there because a lot of people do ask about how I juggle and kind of what I'm doing. And maybe this is insightful. Maybe if you juggle this same way, it can kind of let you know that it's not impossible to overcome. But again, just consider like, if you're not too ingrained into this juggle form, consider switching to that juggle form. I mean, even me, someone who's been juggling this way for like 10 years is considering switching. Um, so it's just something to think about for sure. And I think that's gonna do it for this video. This is just kind of to get my thoughts out there, just kind of explore this topic a little bit. And uh, hopefully it was a little bit insightful for you guys as well. I've been really thinking about switching my juggling form. So if I do, I'll be documenting the whole process and kind of showing the journey. So if that sounds interesting to you guys, let me know down below. And uh, yeah, again, hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, leave a like, subscribe, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out. Ooh, okay, five tap, ten it off. <laughs>